NLP begins somewhere around in 1975. That's the time when this whole subject was formulated and this happens even before the name is coined. Now what I'm going to tell you is my version of this whole journey of how NLP began. And I'm telling you this from what I've heard from Dick, from Steve, from Dills, and of course from reading all these books and attending the various sessions and putting all the dots together, whatever comes to my mind today is what I'm telling you. So what I tell you is my version. What I tell you is mine. It's my property. And of course, the map is not the territory. You know, that's that's the beautiful presupposition. NLP begins somewhere around in 1975, but my journey with NLP begins in 2008. And uh, when I when I first stepped into the room, and after some days when I got into the power of the subject with the eye movements and the hand movements and breathing and voice and, and everything, I said, how could we really miss such an amazing neurological phenomena? How was this missed for all these years and why the damn thing is not put in our education syllabus? You know, that's something which I kept thinking from 2008 and till today. And I think whenever you hear this video even after next 10 years also i think you too will wonder why is this not put in our education syllabus educational syllabus well the story of nlp is interesting it's a story of two guys who begins something very interesting the psycho tool nlp so richard bandler and john grinder okay the two amazing guys with with whom this whole subject this whole journey begins um, my, my respect to them and my love for them to, to begin something some, something so amazing. So way back in the late 50s, John Grinder, who was a student of psychology, student of philosophy uh, in the University of San Francisco. This is the time in the US when it's the Kennedy era, you know, and John Grinder is someone who is physically capable, intellectually competent and very, very smart, aggressive, go-getter kind of a personality. Uh, back in the day, somebody with such kind of skills would be pulled into the secret services and so was John Grinder very competent guy. Uh, his ability to pick up language was so powerful that that from any language, from any geographical sphere, when somebody speaks, John would pick up the basics of the language so well that he will he will master the basic that it appears that he is a pro in that language. He wouldn't master the language, but he would know how to pick up the basics. And now he could do this because he could easily pick down the body language. He would nail down the body language so well, so competent. You know, he would he would pretend and nobody would be able to come to know that he's not the native speaker. So being in the secret services, uh, John in one of the sessions of uh, NLP has said this and even Dick had told this in one of the sessions that uh, how uh, he developed a sensory acuity being in the secret services. In one of the sessions, John told himself that he could tell by the sound of the footsteps of the enemy uh, where the landmines were planted. You know, he would he would just listen this carefully. He would hear out to that and he would say, oh, the, the sound is going this way and they're coming this way. That means a landmine is somewhere over here. You know, he would he would help his team get that get that draft the plan like a sonar wave you know he would do that and and from the secret services he also went into the cia you know this man is really interesting his career graph is very exciting and and later on mid 60s he moved from there to the university again and this time he's he's from student to professor um, because of his language skills he got into he got into the university again from being a cia agent uh, to becoming the president for the students of democratic society that's what uh, john took up now john grinder was pretty brilliant in everything that he almost did uh, now, in 1965, they were beginning this big experiment to uh, to start the University of California. And that's the time when they decided to go out and out to hunt for the best and the brightest uh, people to head this assignment. The University of California it was a big experiment. And John Grinder was one of them. Now, Richard Bandler was someone from the complete opposite side of the tree. He was from New Jersey. He was a fun. He was a drummer, a musician. Now, uh, Virginia Satire had once said that if not not for me, Richard Bandler would have been dead long time ago in some gang or something. Well, he too was brilliant in everything that he did. And this is when he got admission into the University of California. And that's when these two met, the Grinder and Bandler met. Now, Grinder was a radical professor. He was, he was completely out of the box. He would do things so differently. He would go to the student at their level and teach them the way they could learn, maybe in the canteen, maybe in the foyer. He was radical. 
this is when these two people meet, right? And then after some time, Bandler leaves the University of California to go to Stanford. That's the time when he gets employed with a book publishing company. And this book publishing company was uh, making a material on Gestalt, the genius Fritz Perl. And this, this book uh, kind of gave a whole understanding of the genius himself and how Gestalt works. Now, this was edited by John O. Stevens. Remember, John O. Stevens is Steve Andreas. In the initial days with the Gestalt days, he was popularly called as John O. Stevens. And later on, the rest of his life, uh, he led as uh, Steve Andreas. Now, this was edited by Steve John back then. Now, Richard Bandler would work on this book day in, day night. And here's something interesting about Bandler. He's like a sponge. You give him anything and he'll absorb it. You give him anything, any behavioral tactics, any understanding of human behavior, he would just absorb that nature. He's like a sponge. While working with the Gestalt book, he would absorb that material so much that he would go and conduct his own Gestalt sessions. He started running his own Gestalt ways, uh, uh, Gestalt groups in his own way, and he would do it so brilliantly. And Bandler would travel to Santa Cruz and that's when he would meet uh, Grinder again. And, and Bandler would convince Grinder to join him in the Gestalt group that he's conducting. Now, Bandler didn't know what is he doing with the Gestalt thingy in the group, but he would do it so perfectly well because he's like a sponge. He would convince Grinder to join him. Now, Grinder back in that time had just written a book on economics. And Grinder would believe that psychotherapy and psychology is all kind of rubbish, you know, it's all nonsense and it's only for the rich people. Something like that kind of he would believe because he's coming from the economic, something very logical world. But you know, Bandler, he would talk Grinder to join him. With his gift of gab, he would convincingly talk Grinder to come into this Gestalt group. Now, Grinder got into the Gestalt group with uh, Bandler and he was, he was just seeing what's happening around and he was amazed with the results that uh, Bandler is bringing out and and being professor linguist being the linguistic man you know NLP linguistic comes from Bandler being from the linguistic background learned under uh, professor Noam Chomsky um, he could understand the patterns which Bandler is using the you know how he intuitively will use the words and and the automatic flow so basically there was a specific technology that Bandler was applying to this whole subject in this Gestalt group now he doesn't know what he's doing because he's doing it naturally and very intuitively now this is the beginning of NLP with Grinder and Bandler in that Gestalt room in that Gestalt group now, Bandler wanted to know how and what is happening and Grinder said, here's the deal. If you teach me to do what you're doing, if you teach me to do what you're doing, I will tell you what you're doing. Now, that's the beginning. That's model of the model. You know, that's modeling. That's the beginning of modeling. Now, that's when NLP begins. The whole science of NLP begins. So basically what Grinder is telling is I cannot explain or describe a language that I cannot speak myself. So you teach me how to do it and I'll tell you what you did.